You know the drill. You buy the ticket, you take the ride. And welcome back to another fine morning with the morning buzz with myself. Um, today, this marks what number ten, right, Nick? That that's right, ten. Yeah, we we hit a milestone. We made it to double digits. All my fingers now are accounted for, and um, we're good to go today. I got a special special guest. Um, I was lucky enough to um, get in contact with uh, Jason Martinez, also known as Jayhawk from the Infirmities. Um, one of the probably the biggest touring band on Mozilla Records right now. Um, fantastic. Uh, Nick, just bring him in whenever you can, please. Hey, man, how's it going? Hey, what's up, Jimmy? How are you? Good, dude. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Good, dude. Thanks I feel like... Having... Yeah. yeah, I feel like I know you pretty well already. I feel like I've been talking to you for weeks now. <laughs> yeah, well, ever since, uh, you know, Scooter was on the show, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know... Yeah, no, and it's been great, man. Came natural, you know. I was watching Scooter's uh, when you had Scooter on, and was having fun just hearing him tell stories. So uh, I think we just started chatting after that. So it just kind of made sense, you know. <laughs> Come on the show. Yeah, no, and I'm glad you did. And and I got a pretty sweet skateboard coming out of it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate that. That's cool. No, and I I appreciate you coming on. Um, uh, we'll get right into it. Like, you guys played your first show this weekend back. Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, we actually, we were in Anaheim and we performed at the world famous doll hut and we've been playing there for years, but it was just, it was a lot of fun because it was like, I don't know, probably the first show we played since this whole thing happened, uh, in 2020, where it just felt like a real punk show again. Like everybody was in great vibes, great spirits. Uh, we had people jumping off the stage, stage diving. I mean, it was it was everything you want in a punk rock show, so it was fun. Yeah, but I had to, had, I had to feel good again. Oh yeah, you know, a little bit of normality in the in the circle pit there. Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Um, uh, what was I getting into? Um, did you guys play with anybody else, or was it just just straight you guys? Or, um, yeah, we were there with a bunch of bands. I, I couldn't name them all off the top of my head. It's probably at least fifteen of them or something. Oh wow. <laughs> Yeah, we came on at 11 p.m., so we were one of the closers for the night, but a bunch of bands opened up. Uh, let's see, uh, Dog Face Bastards, uh, The Bullet Bumps, which is actually uh, my boy from that band is the one who put on the concert, and uh, Room 7, a bunch of bands, a bunch of bands. I couldn't name them all. No, I no, put... I, I wouldn't expect you to with that many. I didn't know if it was just a, you know, a show with like an opener or two, but obviously it was a whole day of music. <laughs> Yeah, I want to say it started like at four o'clock or something or five or something. That's awesome. There was so many bands, you know, it was like a festival type thing. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we were talking earlier too. Uh, you guys some have some upcoming stuff coming out. Yeah. Um. Well, we're working on a split. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, we've got a split coming up with uh, MDC. Yeah, which is kind of a household punk rock name at this point. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, we toured with NBC uh, a couple of years back and we became good friends. And so uh, we were working on a brand new song during 2020 called Cell Block Earth. And uh, just about all the lockdowns that happened globally. And so uh, kind of caught the attention of Dave. Dave's like, man, I like where you're going with this. We should do a split. So I said, yeah, sounds good to me. We're in. <laughs> so, it was it was a pretty much done deal right when he said it. I mean, I don't have to think too much about it. So, yeah, uh, we we went and recorded some more songs this this past weekend. So after the show, we recorded two more songs for the split. It's supposed to be four songs from us and four songs from MDC on the other side. Oh, very cool, man! I'll be looking forward to that. And was that coming out on Maltzota? Uh, right now it's it's undetermined what we're gonna do exactly as far as uh label wise gotcha there's a label that dave wants to use too so 
but I did talk to Scooter about it, and hopefully we come in some kind of agreement, or maybe both labels can be a part of it and collaborate that way. So. Yeah, I mean, Scooter. Yeah, Scooter's a great guy, man. They, they, they all are. They were very, very good to us for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then did you tell me there was a live coming, a live like album and documentary coming too? Yeah, there's a lot coming. There's, there's, <laughs> we're always got stuff going on. Um, we're super grateful. I mean, we've been staying really, really busy, even though, you know, the world kind of came to a, you know, a kind of went in a freeze mode as far as live shows went. Mm-hmm. Uh, as soon as that happened, we finally had time to go and mix that live album that we should have sat down and mix when we were on tour all those years. <laughs> and uh, we, we, it's actually the poster right behind me, right here in the Fox Theater. Oh really? Uh, yeah, this this poster right here was the night that we headlined the Fox Theater in uh, Old Town Salinas, which is my hometown. Yeah, you did. And, you told me that. Yeah, so basically, it's going to be a live album of of this right here from this night is uh, Friday, April seventh, and it was back in twenty seventeen. Thing is, we never had time to mix it until now because uh, we're always touring. <laughs> so you, you know. So, you know, when you're always on, like, doing shows, like, nonstop, you don't sit down to write albums like you should. <laughs> you don't sit down to mix for hours like you should. Because, um, you know, you're overseas or you're in a van somewhere or you're driving through fast food. <laughs> right. just, I was going to say, yeah, you probably don't, you don't really get much of anything done other than touring. <laughs> that's what punk rockers can afford, man. It's like, uh, that's kind of my joke at the night, you know, like, like in the night when we play shows, it's like, you know, buy a sticker, you know, they're only a dollar, you know, and, you know, that's, that's two tacos on the way home. You know, I'm always cracking jokes about it because, you know, punk rock bands, we live off, you know, dollar food, you know. So. Well, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, at least we eat though, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, eat something, whatever's cheap, you know, tacos. Right. And uh, I've, before we get into the, show thing i was talking about we were talking about before i wanted to just say uh like you were showing the posters and whatnot um you're a graphic designer as well and like dude some of your your like i looked at some of your work obviously it, it's amazing like i said i want a shirt with that design on it someday oh absolutely man um uh, you know after the show i'll i'll get your info we'll sh- i'll send you guys one so no big deal awesome man and, and what is it the, what was your company is it the original mr hat uh, yeah, well, it's just, just it's just called Hey Mr. Hat. Hey Mr. But, Hat, that's what it was. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, but it does say the original on top. That's where uh, I got that from, then. So I'm not crazy. No, no, no. You, you, you're you're pretty accurate on that part. Uh, <laughs> the crazy part, or the... well, who knows? I mean, we're all a little crazy. So. <laughs> but no, dude. Some like uh, I don't know. Like I told you before, I was watching that one, uh, the, the other podcast you were on, the one you sent me, and. Just say, when you were saying about you were in what second grade, I think, or whatever, and selling your drawings to kids in the lunch line, and I just said to you, I'm like, is there anything you've never been good at? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I wasn't, I wasn't really good at like, uh, like I wasn't the popular kid or nothing like that. I definitely went through all the normal punk rock stuff. Like I was a kid who was like picked on, and uh, you know, in the back of the bus, like some guys like spitting, you know, spitballs at me or something through a straw, you know. I was not the cool kid at all, uh, and uh, the only way I made friends I found was was through my artwork, because people found out that I could draw really well. So they'd be like, you know, uh, I'll pay you to make me a drawing or something like this. And then my teacher noticed like what what I was doing, and so she what she did is um, whenever it was time for recess. Uh, in second grade, she would let me put all my my drawings on the wall, and I'd sell them for fifty cents and stuff like that. <laughs> That's really rad. It's never the kid to get picked on a team or nothing weird like that. But I was never into sports, anyways. But it just, I don't know. I think I had like one friend who like first through fourth grade, <laughs> like like you know. Well, no, dude, and I get it because like I, you know, and I, actually I thought about this today too. Is and I'm thirty seven now, but like I. Like I told you, I'm, you know, I'm wearing like small town, uh, redneck country, basically Pennsylvania. And like, I was, I was driving down the road today and I saw a guy like walking in full camo and he had like camo on his face, you know, and nobody even bats an eye at that. 
Me walking up the street with blue hair, you'd think I was the sideshow circus walking through town. Like, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's it's such a strange thing. And like, I I don't know. I was definitely not the popular kid by any means. I just I kind of got along with everybody, but I was never in a crowd or a clique. I was probably in the only punk rock band I think this town ever had, maybe. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. It, it, we just and it was more like a me first and the gimme gimme thing. Cause we just used a lot of theirs and did a lot of those covers because that's what worked at a bar. And like around here, when we had to get booked, it was just like you had to play three hours worth. So playing three hours of punk rock covers, it was a tedious, tedious thing at times. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Because like, yeah, like because you guys, you have that slogan. What if you miss two minutes, you miss two songs? Isn't that how it goes? Yeah, yeah. It's just our songs are so short, man. I mean, that's just how good old school punk rock is. You know, it's uh, straight to the point. You know, there's, you know, all killer, no filler, man. It's just uh, so our our music is in thirty minutes of time. You know, a normal punk rock set is thirty minutes. We do about, I'd say about 24 songs or something in 30 minutes. So That's all awesome. of our songs are really, are really short. Yeah. Yeah, they're short, but they're awesome, man. Yeah. I yeah. think I like the way I like the way uh, Joey Ramone once said it, I, and then I, I might be quoting a little bit wrong, but he basically said, you know, our songs aren't aren't short. They're they're actually um, really really long. We just play them faster. <laughs> <laughs> He said something like that. I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're just using that to go right in the thing, uh, you and I were talking about life-changing shows, and you, you know, you said a life-changing show for you was getting to see the Ramones, which I never got to did. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was pretty awesome. I was still in high school, and um, uh, uh, it was a Lollapalooza, 90, 1996, I believe. It was the Ramones' last tour ever. Audio Amigos tour. Uh, Yep, yep, and they had CJ on the bass. So mm-hmm. it was Ramon with, uh, I saw a bunch of people on one day, actually. So it was Devo was the special guest. It wasn't on the flyer, so they were like a surprise or something. Mm-hmm. So it was uh, Devo, Rancid, and the Ramones, Metallica. It was like a really mixture of like a like, whole bunch of bands. I think Soundgarden was there, too. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I was most excited to see uh, Rancid and the Ramones. And I just remember going right to the front when the Ramones came on. I mean, I had listened to a lot of the records and stuff, and I knew the songs, but I'd never seen them live. And one thing that really blew my mind was just the the simple fact that they just never stopped. You know, it was like every song, one, two, three, four, and another one, one, two, three, four. And it was just so, I mean, even as young as I was uh, in high school, seeing that, kind of nonstop rapid fire energy where they didn't take time to talk in between songs. They just kind of, you know, uh, I think uh, uh, Joe Strummer from the class said when the Ramones came to England, they played in the clubs. It was like a locomotive went through the building. And, and that is, And that is exactly what it feels like when you saw them live. It's like you didn't expect it to be that. But I mean, it, it was so awesome. I and mean, my jaw was like dropped. I mean, it, it, but it taught me a lot. It taught me, you know, you don't get up there and waste people's time. You know, you you um, you want to definitely give them a show and you don't want to, you know, there's no, I mean, people didn't come to hear you talk. I mean, they came to hear the music. Right. I mean, I, yeah, unless you're no effects, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, they're the only ones I feel like get away with that a lot. <laughs> they do. Yeah. I mean, I, I find them funny, but like <laughs> some people don't. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, man. And like, I don't know. I've I, like uh, still to this day, uh, the Ramones, I think it's, it's live from 77 or 79 or whatever that live album. Like I watch videos, the video of that and stuff. And like, even back then, just seeing the energy and how fast everything was played. Like, and I'm like thinking that's 1978. Like I just can't, I can't even like, I don't know. Everything's so much faster with them live. Cause I've heard all their live albums, obviously. Yeah. And it's just, it's so cool. And like you said, it's just one, two, three, four, right into the next one. No, I mean, I've got them tatted on my arm. I've got, um, I've got a Ramones tat here. And, you know, a big part of that is just, is one of those shows. It was just like, it was like a life changing show for me. Cause it, it kind of like showed me how it was done. Like, you know, you don't, you just gotta like, 
you got to just, you know, punch, 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 you know, don't, don't, uh, don't hold back. Because be- I was already in punk bands since I was a kid. I mean, I, my first punk band, I was like 15. Oh, wow. But when I, when I saw the Ramones, I, I want to say I was about 18 or 19. And um, I mean, sure. I mean, I did. I had a punk band or whatever. But seeing that was kind of like, man, I got to go home and really do my homework here. I got I got to I got to I got to have that, that kind of energy where it's just keep going, going, going and not stop you know so it taught me a lot and after that i did change the way i did things as far as like i wanted to make a set list it was like rapid fire and i was like attack you know not no t- no talking no yeah so and that, that's how infirmities is too I mean, we don't really stop <laughs> so, no so. no dude everything i've heard too it's it i, I it's so I, awesome <laughs> it, it changed my life because that's that's exactly the way that we we do our set you know it's non-stop and uh it's good because the i look at it like this you know what when when a kid wants to get into the circle pit uh you know once he's in he doesn't want to get out and if the music is going non-stop and it's going through all these different styles of punk rock i mean it's just like if you can just keep them in there and and it just keeps going i mean it's just even better you know yeah, so. and it's almost like a series of emotions, like you said, with the different styles and stuff like that, like keep to keep you going in the pit and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. As a fan, I feel that way anyway. And like I didn't, uh, like I necessarily get to see the Ramones, who I think, like you know, that was the one. But to me, like I, you know, I've been in some local bands and stuff. But like when I first, I've seen Bad Religion, I think eight times now. But like the first time I saw them, it like definitely changed the way I went about my stage presence and stuff. Like just, you know what I mean? And. Yeah, everyone everyone has that one show, man, you know, where it's like kind of wakes you up, you know. Yeah, it's almost just, you know what I mean? Like it's somebody you looked up to for so long and like they did, they they showed you how it was done, you know what I mean? Like that's the way to, you know, I don't know, almost in your head, like that's how it's done. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. I mean, yeah, and anybody like the Ramones, obviously, like that's how it's done. Because like I don't, I don't even argue with the whole like Sex Pistols, blah 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 thing. Like to me, just I don't know the Ramones. I don't, I just they set the standard for me anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that argument's old already. Yeah, for sure, for sure, man, for sure. I mean, I mean, I mean you know, I mean, you could take it further, you know, like, uh, I don't know if you saw the documentary on that band uh, called Death, you know, uh, which came out a few years ago. Uh, but they were trying to predate that. They're like, see, this is before Ramones, and this is like, it's like, you know, the whole, like, before or who came first, I mean, it does it even matter anymore? It's kind of like, no. not really, because it's, it's evolved, you know, it's evolved so much. I mean, yeah, there's, there's so much style, there's so many different styles to it. Yeah. We should just be happy that punk rock is punk rock, you know, that it exists, you know, not, not uh, who started it, you know, came first, the chicken or the egg. I, I, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> And what makes me happier is like, uh, I don't know, I, I was in Riot Fest 2018 and I, I, Jerry Lee Lewis was there playing the piano late night. And, uh, but like, I don't know, my, I saw kids crowd surfing to that. And like, same way when I see kids at punk rock shows and stuff, like it just, it makes me feel good to know that like, it's getting carried on. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, we're, we're real big on that. To me, you know, um, uh, it's all about the next generation, man. I mean. You know, a lot of us have been in punk bands our whole lives, and we've been doing a lot of different things. Um, I've been a front man for punk bands. Uh, I think I'm going on like 27 years or something like that. Wow. You know, but, but when I meet kids, you know, that are starting bands or, or, or they haven't started a band yet, but they're just excited to go to a show and they love the adrenaline. I mean, I remember what that's like, you know, like, like when you first discover something like that and, I'm always trying to encourage them, like, yeah, man, you need to start a band, you know, you need to, you know, I think a lot of the newer generation, they took shortcuts, and instead of learning to play guitar, they just play, like, Guitar Hero, you know, so it's like, like, all right, you know, (laughs) when I was, when I was your age, you know, we didn't have the internet, we did not have cell phones, and what did we do to have a good time and stay out of trouble? We started punk rock bands, I mean, it was something we did. You know, they kept us out of trouble, and it was creative, and it was fun. And, uh, you know, I I always try to encourage the young, the young people. 
Yeah, and uh, it's funny you brought that up because I just actually started doing something. I like uh, I've been going on like Facebook Marketplace and stuff like that, and finding people who are getting rid of guitars and stuff like that for twenty, thirty dollars. And I've been fixing them up and whatever, and like just trying to get them into kids' hands who not necessarily can you know afford a brand new instrument or anything like that. Just restricting yeah. them, yada yada yada. But I started doing that just because I don't know. Like I I hate the same thing. It's like you said. It's like it's the shortcut of Guitar Hero and stuff like that. I even seen a thing you can put on a guitar now, and you push buttons. And it holds the chords down for you. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's cheating, man. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big cheating, man. Like, I, I, I only play bass. And, like, I can't even bring myself to use that thing to even pretend to play the guitar. Because I just, I feel like an imposter. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I understand. I mean, I don't play, I don't play any instruments. I mean, I'm guilty of that part. I, I'm just, I, I sing. Um, you know, I've always been a front man. I've always... Wanted to be the singer since I was a kid, I think, even before I was in bands. I was like MTV kid. I'd come home after school, throw my backpack down and my books and put on the MTV, you know, and like I'd get in front of it with like a, like a, like my mom's mop, you know, it was like the, that was like the mic stand and, or I'd get on top of the couch and pretend that that was the stage, you know, uh, yeah. and then I'd have another friend come over and he'd pretend he was playing drums or playing guitar. So, you know, I, I was I was that kid, you know, so not any disrespect to people that wanted to play guitar or drums or in other instruments, but I think for me, like, I, I just always, yeah, the couch was the stage, you know? <laughs> so no, and say, dude, I was, I always wanted to be a drummer, to be honest with you, and I remember as a kid, I was be using rolled up posters and a box fan that I would beat on. Yeah. And, and that's how I was a drummer, but it ended up, I, I, got into like junior high or beginning of high school or something but my friend had was a guitarist my other friend was a drummer they needed a bassist i needed something to do other than breaking my head on a skateboard so that's what i did yeah it's one of those things i think uh you know we're all destined to do something as far as you know whether it's music or something else and sometimes you know our calling it it, it just shows time that we're little guys you know yeah yeah for sure and uh I was. Do you guys ever come out to the East Coast and play? You know, we're we're talking to some folks about that right now. We we've toured with bands from the East Coast, but we haven't been out there ourselves. They've toured with us here in California. Like we did a whole tour with uh, the Undead, which uh, featured uh, Bobby Steele, original guitarist uh, of the Misfits. Right. Uh, we did a whole uh, Northern California thing with them. Uh, through San Francisco and Sacramento, and, and it was a whole lot of fun. But um, we've yet to uh, to go to the East Coast ourselves. Uh, yeah, so it's something we're talking about for sure. Well, uh, and as things are starting to open up, you know that that's definitely uh, that's definitely on the bucket list. So well, uh, it, keep it on there and keep me in mind because I'm actually putting together. Uh, I might as well announce this now. I'm putting together like a morning buzz bash out here. Okay. And I'm going to try to get some, I'm going to have some bands and whatnot. I don't even know dates or even how far in the future or anything yet or anything like that. But I mean, uh, yeah, just keep me informed if you're coming this way or anything. I, I definitely will. I definitely will. Um, it's, it's crazy, you know, with the internet, you know, you can have fans from all over the place and, and, you know, overseas or in the east coast and everybody you know is like you need to come out here you know um so we've been able to go overseas you know um, we did for two summers we did uh uh 2018 and 2019 and we got to do uh, a whole tour that that covered uh berlin uh germany potsdam germany belgium uh we did paris france and we did all different parts of England, like all different uh, sectors, Blackpool, London. Um, and for, so for us, you know, doing the Netherlands, it was really just a, a lifelong dream uh, just to be able to go to the UK and to bring our style of punk rock to the UK um, and, and play these big festivals. We got to play Rebellion Festival uh, to pro. And uh, the second year, we were on the main stage with uh, Descendants and Flipper. Wow. And so it was a lot of fun. And uh, 
and and I got to take my 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 wife and my daughter with me, which probably is not a common part of most band stories, but for for me it was awesome. And my daughter rocked on stage with me at yeah. on, on big shows. Yeah, I was I I heard that on that other show, and I was gonna get touch on that when you said about Rebellion Fest. Didn't she come on and do a song with you guys? She did, and actually, she's a big reason why. Uh, we went from the introducing stage, which is the really small stage, uh, first time band stage, I'll start on the small stage. It's called the introducing stage. We were on that in 2018. And my daughter said, you know, daddy, I want to sing with you up there. So I said, all right, let's do it. So um, she had never really sang uh, with the microphone on. She used to run around the stage and just kind of like she she knew some of my stage moves, so she kind of like mimicked me and do this thing behind me. And the, I think the crowd would get a kick out of it because it was always spontaneous. It, you could tell it wasn't staged or something. It was just like letting a little girl naturally have fun. Yeah. And she, she and she had been doing that since she was. I had her on stage with me since she was about two, two, three, four. And by the time we were in England together, she was five. Um, the, the the funny part is, so I, I told the sound, I put her microphone on and, and do me a favor and watch the levels because I don't know what she's going to do. You might have to turn her up. You might have to make sure she doesn't feed back. I don't know. And she she blew us all away. Not not only uh, me being her dad, but all the members of my band. We all just kept looking down like, what's going on right now? You know, She knew all the words, almost all the words to all the songs. Which I didn't even know she 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 knew that. It's funny, like when they grow up listening to to your music in the car or something, cruising around, or um, you don't really realize how much they retain. You know, they look they they retain everything. They like a sponge. They say, you know. Yeah, and no, and you're right. She was on stage, she was like, I'm like hearing her through the PA, and I'm and I'm I can't believe that you know she she knows all the words. And she's she's got all the moves and like the the crowd was taking all these pictures, you know, from the UK. And so it was just a really special moment. It was her first time singing on stage. And when we, right when we got off the stage, all kinds of people wanted her autograph. <laughs> so we went back to the merch table and you know, here's this five year old uh, little girl signing autographs for the first time. And it, it was just really special. Some guy wanted the set list and we all signed the set list and and then right when we got off stage, the, the main director of Rebellion, um, he came to talk to me backstage. And he said, uh, he said, we got to have you back on the main stage next year. So that performance not only blew us away, but, you know, it, it was already decided right when we got off the stage that we were going to come back and play the, the big stage. So, Dude, so that's of course. We had to bring her back and do it again, so it was it was fun. That's really cool. I mean, not only a proud dad moment, but even just like you know what I mean, just to see a kid do that, like that's that's super rad. <laughs> yeah, no, it's I I still we have it up on YouTube. Oh, uh, we have that that performance on YouTube. I have to share it with you. It's it's a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, and you said about you know not you know most punk rockers you know don't have the wife and kids on the road and stuff like that, but you uh just talking to you, man, you are very like. You were very into your family. You were very like dedicated to your family and stuff, like your friends and everything. Like you're, you, you were a decent human being, from what I can tell. Uh, thank you, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, absolutely, man. Like it's, it's, it's seriously, it's been an honor talking to you the last couple of weeks and stuff like that, and getting to know you. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I don't even a lot of my guests, I don't get to know this close. And actually, like you and Scooter both, I've got to know pretty well, and like. I told him earlier, I was talking to him, and I just said, you know, Malt Soda's always got, you know, number one dibs here or whatever we can to do for any of you guys. Like, Awesome, awesome. No, Scooter, Scooter's amazing story to tell for me because I, I uh, the way that we came to Malt Soda was uh, we had recorded uh, our EP in Los Angeles. Uh, it was produced by Miguel Conflict, who's the drummer for Total Chaos. And I'm old, I'm friends with them many years. We've toured and done many shows together. And um, so it was just kind of natural. We ended up in their studio uh, recording our, our, our first EP there. And um, But I didn't want to just put it out ourselves. And I had been shopping it around, sending it to labels. 
And uh, a friend of mine by the name of Dave Dalton actually suggested, why don't you email it to uh, Scooter over at Malt Soda? You know, I think I think he'd be into it. So I did. And uh, so, uh, you know, Scooter, the first time he heard it, uh, I only sent him one song. I didn't send him the whole record. I'm like, well, if he doesn't like one song, there's there's no point in sending him anything right. more than so 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 I gave it a shot. I I I I sent over what I felt was like the best song on the on the record, right? And so um it was funny because he emailed me back instantly when he heard it and he said, uh uh I need you to call me tonight. And I, I didn't know what that meant. So I called him and uh, he said, man, I have not heard anything in years that uh, he's like, I get a lot of demos, a lot of submissions come in. Uh, but that thing that I just heard that song, he's like, man, you just took me back to the 80s. He's like, man, you just, he's like, man, it kicked my ass. You know, he was just like, he was like, I haven't heard anything that I instantly wanted to put is part of the malt soda catalog in a long time. And I just heard a song that I, I definitely want to put you guys on malt soda and, and, and release that record. So it was, it was a really good feeling. And uh, we worked together. Of course, I did all the artwork. I, I designed the cover and all that stuff. And, uh, but it was real special when we joined malt soda. Uh, uh, first, not only did he love the music, he decided to get a second opinion about our band because he didn't know a lot about us yet. And so he called Sammy Town from Fang. And uh, he said, Sammy, uh, I'm thinking of signing infirmities. I, and he, he knew Sammy lived out here. He's lived in Oakland at the time. I'm in Salinas. And we'd play shows with Fang already. And uh, so Sammy vouched for me on the phone. He said, you know, that, that band right there, they play shows all the time. So... If you put out their record, you know, they're going to sell them because they're always playing shows. And, you know, if you're asking my opinion, he's like, yeah, I, I'd say I'd say go for it. I mean, um, and then we would only been around a couple of years at that time, but we were very active. You know, we may not have had a record out, but we were playing a lot of shows. We did everything backwards. We didn't have a record out, but we played everywhere all the time. <laughs> Everybody wanted a record, but we didn't have one. So finally, you know, it's like we had a record coming out on Malt Soda. And it was like we we sold so many right away because people have been waiting for years for us to release an album. And finally we did it. So, yeah, we did it really backwards. Most bands make a demo first and, and then get a show or something. I don't know. Yeah, but... We were, we did it backwards. Yeah. In a sense, though, man, you kind of built up your crowd and kept them, you know what I mean, kept them along for a couple of years. And then when you finally did come out, I mean, you have people, you know, years now of people waiting for this who's going to flock and buy this. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know if that's backwards, per se. Like, that's just a different way of going about it. So this is it right here. There's a little plug for Malt Soda. This is the EP that we released on Malt Soda Records. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, is that still available you, on there? Yeah, you can go to maltsoda.com and we have all different colors. This happens to be a, a blue one, you know, blue vinyl. Yeah, my favorite color, I know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, there's actually still colored vinyl on the website. We don't have any as a band anymore. We, 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 we ran out of our portion of the colored ones a long time ago. Uh, we, we still sell the black vinyl at the shows, but. Um, we've been sold out of the colors for a long time. <laughs> so, what? No, that's selling out's not a bad thing. You can still get them on the website. So I tell people, I don't, I don't have the color ones, but if you go to Maltzola.com, you can still pick any color. It comes in uh, red vinyl, blue vinyl, white vinyl, or black. So you have different options. Oh, nice. And they got a killer skateboard deck on there, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Thank you for, uh, you know, picking up a deck. No, awesome. dude, it was too cool not to. Once you told me about it, and I looked at it. I'm like, I have to have that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, did yeah. you design that or anything? Yeah, I, I worked together uh, myself and another artist. It was collaboration. Um, but, you know, sometimes it, 
what happens with me too is I, I can have a vision of something and then I meet another artist who, who's who got a little different take on something. Um, sometimes I like working with people that specialize in just comic book styles or, um, it, you know, art's one of those things where you can be really good at, at what you do and your style of it. And then you can take your vision to another artist and be like, you know, I like what you do, but can we do like my idea, but with what you do? I've, I've, I've sat with other people that were really great artists, like amazing people like Jimbo Phillips out of Santa Cruz, who's designed a lot of skateboards and amazing stuff. And one time I took him uh, our infirmities logo when we first started and I had hand drawn it and it was a, uh, it was a skull and then uh, the mohawk said infirmities in the hair. And I took the drawing to him and I go, yeah, I wanted you to like redraw it, man. And he's like, dude, I think it looks great just like this. Like if I redraw it, my style, it's it's not going to be the same. Like it looks really, I think you should leave it like that. <laughs> so, you know, it's always like a different take. You know what I mean? Like sometimes we, we kind of second guess our own our own abilities. And well, oh, we, for sure. yeah, I'm a, definitely guilty of that. <laughs> So, but yeah, it, it, but yeah, for that one, yeah, I, it was myself and one other artist and, uh, we had, we had, um, we had worked with, uh, a skateboard company that had sponsored us in the past and they were doing some shirts for us. And, uh, the idea was to finally make, uh, our own skateboard deck. And I knew that Malt Soda already had a history of making some amazing, uh, skateboard decks like the rkl bang mm -hmm. one white so you know of course i went to scooter i said hey i think we want to do a skateboard deck next you know it's like we got the record what about a skateboard you know so that was uh that's how that came about you know yeah and you said speaking about amazing artists like uh or, um you know i'm a huge rkl fan and whatnot i got i got to actually chat with dan sites for three hours yesterday out of nowhere he followed the show which was really exciting for me Oh, that's that's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, super super cool guy too. And I was just it was it was a shock to me. I was it was kind of one of them. You know, I've been his art literally decorates my entire living room. So it was just like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and speaking of which, man, I would love to have something that you've drawn too. And if you'd sign it, like I'll uh, if you do anything like that. Yeah, no, I I I I'd, I'd be more than welcome to do that for you. Um, yeah, I work with a lot of different. Um, obviously punk rock bands over the years. Uh, I've done stuff for Dwayne Peters, Gunfight. I've worked with some of the members of Suicidal Tendencies uh, for Lewisidal Projects. Um, I've done a lot of posters for concerts, more than more than uh, other stuff. I, I do posters and flyers all the time. So I've done, I've done stuff for like TSOL and, and, uh, yeah, I mean, some of them are behind me, but I wouldn't be able to move the camera everywhere. No, no, that's... But, but, but I mean, yeah, I, somebody told me you need to make a website and put all your designs up there and sell posters, but I, I do need to do that, and I will eventually here. I, I just, uh, that's definitely going to happen. So, so, yeah, so. Well, you do amazing work, man. You definitely should. Um, So what can we just, uh, what can we expect coming up from the infirmities? Other than uh, the seven inch, or other than the split, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've got the split with NBC. We've got a 12-inch uh, live album, which is called Infirmities, live at the Fox Theater. And uh, we also, besides the music, you can pick up our skateboards or our vinyl records over at maltsoda.com. Uh, you can find us on all uh, streaming platforms with our new single that we just came out with in 2020 called Cell Block Earth. Which is so awesome. Spotify and you know all those things. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name them all. Let's just say all of them, okay? It's on all of them. Yep, they're there. If you look for them on a platform, they're, you're gonna find them. Yeah, and and we also have a YouTube channel. I, I should I should plug that because we have over a hundred live shows on our YouTube channel to watch from over the years. So if you're bored at home and you want to see some action, uh, go to our uh, YouTube channel. And it's all under the same thing. We are infirmities. So Facebook, it's we are infirmities. Instagram, we are infirmities. And YouTube channel, we are infirmities. So awesome. Dude, hey, I, I want to thank you so much for coming on, man. I it's been it's seriously been a pleasure talking to you and everything. 
Well, thanks for having me, Jimmy. I mean, I, I dig your show, man. I really do. And I, I was I was telling Scooter, man, when I watched it, that, man, that was really cool. I, I really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, I'm going to keep tuning in myself. So. Well, yeah, and I'm I'm actually going to go home and watch some of those live shows tonight. I want to I want to see that one with your kid. Yeah, that that one's. I mean, I watch. I can watch that one over and over. But that's just you know, being a proud dad, and it was, it was one of those moments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we can catch you back on here soon or something. You know, when you're releasing whatever, when the split or something comes out, we'll you know we'll talk. I'll mention one more thing. We're playing Crash Fest which is going to be in San Francisco, October 10th and 11th. Uh, it's a big festival. We play it every year. And there'll be bands from, a couple bands from the UK are actually going to try to make it through, uh, even with all this uh, world traveling being the way it is. Uh, so Resistance 77, we plug them right now, good friends of ours from the UK. Uh, they should be joining us at Crash Fest this year. And a uh, big shout out to Mike, he's putting that together. And um, yeah, I just wanted to plug Crash Fest. That, that's something big that's fun every year that we do. Awesome, man. Well, yeah, and then uh, I will, like, I'll send you the link to this and everything once it's all edited and ready to go. And, you know, I'll be plugging this like crazy as well. Right on. Awesome, man. All right, man. Well, I hope to talk to you soon. I thank you again. Cool. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Thank take you. care of yourself. All right. You too. All right. And that was, again, Jason Martinez, also known as Jayhawk from The Infirmities. Um, just a just a badass band. A great guy, obviously, too. Um, thanks once again, everybody, for tuning in, as you do. Um, it's always a pleasure. Until um, the next time, you know the drill. Buy the ticket, take the ride.